Okay, hello class. Good afternoon. So, this is the continuation or the last part of the video discussion for chapter 3 and we will be discussing about the bacteria. The different types of bacteria and the different classifications of bacteria. Okay. So, for now, uh, I, I actually forgot to include class on the last video, the pictures for the table. So, may dalawang table na hindi inasali. Okay, doon sa last. This is the first one. And then, the second one is this. Now, we will not be focusing on table 6.3. Okay? So, hindi na yan siya kasi sobrang dami niya. So, we will just be focusing doon sa nauna or sa pangalawa. Okay, sa mas naunang table. Which is table... Okay, I cannot discern what number this table is. But anyway, I hope you will see this on your course pack. So, please check this out. This is an older copy. So, medyo claro siya, no? So, in here, there is the var the types of viruses so listed. So, there are nine virus types and within, uh, within each of the virus type, you will find different uh, kinds of viruses. Okay? So, remember, di ba? We, we classify or we group our viruses in in different um in different names nag binibigyan natin sila ng names uh, so that inside the name there will be different types of viruses now the same with your coronavirus okay it contains uh, at least three kinds of coronavirus you have the SARS-CoV diba so na, na i already discussed that so ganun din dito you have the virus type I, this is like the general name, okay? When you say virus type, it is the actually the general name for the viruses with the same characteristics, okay? So, the first one, for example, you have the Pax virus or Pax viruses. You have two types of virus uh, under your Pax viruses. Number one, you have the variola and number two, you have the vaccinia. Now, the variola virus is the one that causes your smallpox and vaccinia virus is the one that causes your cowpox. So, diba? The same. Pareho sila nang they have like a similar type of disease. So, included sila sa one general name which is the pox virus. Okay? So, here we will include the viral characteristics. So, your pox viruses are characterized based on large brick shape uh, with envelope types okay, of, of DNA or double-stranded DNA. Your, your pox virus brick shape siya and it contains an envelope. It contains also your DNA. So, hindi RNA yung nasa pox viruses. So, you have two types of viruses and then the two types of diseases that will be produced. Number two, you have the polyoma or uh, polyoma papilloma. Okay? So, ano yung DNA or what is the genetic information or material that it contain? Double-stranded DNA. And the shape of your polyoma papilloma virus is polyhedral. You have two types of viruses under the classification polyoma papilloma. You have the papilloma virus and the polyoma virus. Your papilloma virus class causes the warts. Uh, usually, yung warts class in, in your body, this is not harmful, no? But, but when you age or habang tumatagal, the warts actually multiply because warts is actually uh, viral infection yan siya. So, meaning, napapasa mo siya sa ibang tao. For example, you're using the towel that uh, your mother uses. And your mother has warts. So, mapwedeng mapapasa sa iyo yung warts din. Okay? Because it is caused by a papilloma virus. And then, your polyoma virus, on the other hand, causes um, disease such as tumors and cancer. Okay, you also have your herpes viruses. 
So, ilan yung para sa herp herpes virus? You have four. Okay? So, your herpes viruses are characterized by polyhedral shape with envelope and a double-stranded DNA. So, you have the first type of virus under your herpes viruses. Herpes simplex 1 which causes cold sores or fever blisters. Now, for the herpes simplex 2, it causes genital her herpes. And then, for herpes zoster, it causes shingles. And then, in varicella, it causes chicken pox. Okay? So, you just read this part because this will be, uh, this table will be, I don't know, um, included in your quizzes and exam. Marami dito ang kukunin so that you will know um, what type of virus causes such diseases. Okay, so this is very important, especially in sa inyo na nursing kayo. Okay, so you should memorize this. So that's for the table. Yung pangalawang table, um, di na masyado needed ito kasi napakarami na, no? So, you just read this maybe, but um, as you just focus on this this table right here, mas yung mas na una, okay? Okay, so let's start with the bacteria. We're done with the viruses. Now we will start with the bacteria. So you have very general characteristics of your bacteria. Number one. Your bacteria are prokaryotic, meaning they do not contain the true nucleus, and they also have lesser organelles. And they are also unicellular, meaning they are composed of only a single cell. And your bacteria class is quite, I don't know, uh, they are quite different from the other types of microorganisms because they can be both autotroph or autotrophic and heterotrophic. So, pwedeng dalawahan. Okay? What do you mean by autotrophic? Meaning, they produce their own food. Okay? Just like your plants, they perform photosynthesis. On the other hand, your heterotrophic, they consume other organic or dead, okay, organic materials in order to produce or in order to get nutrients. Now, second characteristic, most of your bacteria have the cell wall made up of peptidoglycan and they also have ribosomes for the production of protein okay so sabi niya most of your bacteria why there are types of bacteria that do not contain the peptidoglycan okay and then third characteristic you have autotrophs okay since your since your bacteria class can be either autotrophic or heterotrophic so, discuss, diniscuss dito kung ano ba yung two types of autotrophs, okay? Now, in, in, other, in other plants class, um, photosynthetic lang talaga tayo, okay? Sa terrestrial plants natin, they can be photosynthetic, meaning they get their energy from the sun. But in your bacteria, since bacteria nga sila, they are not plants, there are two ways for them, okay, to become autotrophs. Dalawa yung way nila uh, to get energy and produce their own food. So, you have here, the first one is photosynthesis. So, ang tawag sa mga bacteria that performs photosynthesis is photoautotrophs. Okay? Now, th these bacteria uses energy from the sunlight, okay, that produces to produce organic molecules from carbon dioxide and water. So, example natin, your, all your green plants are photosynthetic. Now, there is a second type of autotrophic way, okay, to produce energy or food. You call this as chemosynthesis, coming from the word chemo, meaning it involves chemical reactions in order to produce what? in order to produce energy okay now the organisms under or the organisms that perform chemosynthesis is called chemoautotrophs okay or you can also call them as chemosynthetic autotrophs they your 
your chemosynthetic autotrophs actually they do not get no the energy from the sun to produce food rather ang ginagawa nila they make their food using energy coming from different chemical reactions okay now these chemical reactions are usually they combine the hydrogen sulfide or your methane with oxygen so there is during chemosynthesis class there is a use of oxygen and that is what you call oxidation do you remember the process of oxidation so i know nakuha niyo ito sa biochemistry now when you say oxidation you are adding oxygen okay when you say oxidize merong nadagdag na oxygen now Okay, ano, chemosynthesis, your chemoautotrophs, they use energy from oxidation of inorganic substances to synthesize organic compounds. So, okay, so one example natin is the, okay, I think you will see later. Meron ba tayong, okay, we have it. The sample, no, of of the chemical reactions but to sum it up class okay chemosynthetic autotrophs does not use the sunlight but rather they make use of chemical reactions to produce energy so ano yung kinocombine niya your hydrogen sulfide or methane uh, in addition with oxygen okay so examples of your chemoautotrophs you have the sulfur bacteria oxides okay or your sulfur bacteria that oxidizes sulfur to sulfate and your nitrosomonas species that oxidizes ammonium to nitrate okay so you can also uh, one example din ito mga the bacteria that live in deep ocean yung mga bacteria na nakikita natin near the hydrothermal vents. So let's take a look on let's take a look on the difference in their what they call this uh, chemical reaction. Okay? So do you remember you have the reactant side? Okay? And you also have the product side. So, sa left side natin is the reactants and sa right side ng arrow is the product. Okay? The product of the chemical reaction. Now, during a solar energy or photosynthesis class, you are combining carbon dioxide with water in the presence of sunlight to produce the food for or the energy source for the plants which is the, uh, the carbohydrate glucose so C6H12O6 so itong carbohydrate uh, diyan tayo kumukuha ng energy and then another by product when you say by product another another product no in the chemical reaction is your oxygen so this is the chemical reaction for your photosynthesis on the other hand when you compare it with the chemical reaction in your chemosynthesis, you will not find the oxygen on the product side. So, diba dito, sa photosynthesis, ang oxygen is nasa product side. Now, in the chemosynthesis, you will find the oxygen on the reactant side. Okay? Sa left side, sa reactants. So, that is the process. That is one, one um, indicator that there is oxidation. Okay? So, your carbon dioxide um, co in co uh, combined with your water and your hydrogen sulfide plus your oxygen. So, itong apat na itong reactants and will produce your carbohydrate CH2O or plus the sulfuric acid. So, in short, your chemosynthesis will produce products such as sulfuric acids. Okay? So, that's the difference between the two. But both of these will still give you energy, okay? As a byproduct because both, I mean, as, as the product, the final product because, as you can see, both produce carbohydrates for or as a source of 
energy. So, yan. Dalawang types ng, ng uh, production of energy ang pwedeng gamitin ng bacteria. Okay, next. So, when it comes to, ano naman, reproduction. So, ito, hindi na ito bago sa inyo. We have discussed this before. Your bacteria has two types of reproduction. One is asexual, meaning it does not involve the use of sex cells or gametes. And number two, you have the sexual reproduction that involves the use of sex cells or gametes. So, the asexual um, reproduction for bacteria is the binary fission. Okay, this is where your single cell replicates its genetic material and elongates and then later on, it divides into two similar daughter cells. On the other hand, your conjugation, diba, alam nyo na rin ito, this, there is an exchange or transfer of genetic information between two bacterial cells with the use of a bridge-like connection which is composed of your pili. So, they are using the pili for the exchange of uh, DNA or genetic material. So, here you will see Ito yung, here you will see the difference between your binary fission and conjugation. And then on the center of the, cir of the two circles, you will see their similarities, okay? Now, number one for binary fission, the offspring is identical. Para sa binary fission class, ang napuproduce niya na offspring, pareho ng genetic material, or they are very identical. On the other hand, when it comes to conjugation, the offspring have variation. Now, bakit nagkaroon ng variation sa dalawang offspring? Because remember, during conjugation, there is use of sex cells and there is sharing of genetic material. Okay? Nagkakaroon ng exchange of genetic information, meaning the offspring now is, uh, it contains a genetic information that is a combination of two of the two genetic materials of the two cells of bacteria. Okay? Kaya ngayon, oh, your binary fission, pwede siyang mangyari kahit na isang bacteria lang yung present. On the other hand, the conjugation will not occur if uh, the cells are hindi dalawa yung na-involve na bacteria. Okay? Two bacterial cells. And then, your binary fission takes a little time. On the other hand, the conjugation takes more time than the binary fission. Mas matagal yung process ng conjugation compared to binary fission. And your binary fission is asexual, your conjugation is sexual. Okay? Similarities naman nila, both of them will produce an offspring and both of them involves the use of DNA. Because in binary uh, there is replication of DNA, while in conjugation, there is exchange or transfer of DNA between two bacterial cells. Okay? Now, these are the, dif ano lang no, para, uh, so that I can show you the difference between two processes. In binary fission, coming from one cell, it elongates and divides. In, while in conjugation, you will involve two bacterial cells and there is a connection between them using the pili or pilus for singular. And then after the, the, there is a bridge-like connection, ah, there will be a change or exchange in genetic material. And then after that, the two cells will then again separate. Okay. Next. So, yeah, let's go to the two different types of bacteria. You have, number one, the archaebacteria, and then you also have the eubacteria. Now, um, I know that na natapos na natin ito discuss, but we will just, I don't know, parang pahapyaw na lang siya, class. So, number one, you have the archaebacteria or archaea. Okay, so your archaea class, they are prokaryotic still, meaning they do not contain the, the true nucleus, and they also lack the peptidoglycan. So, ito yung pinakamalaking difference between your archaea 
and your eubacteria. Okay, your archaea does not contain peptidoglycan, while your eubacteria contains peptidoglycan in the cell wall. Now, one unique characteristic of your archaea class is that they live in extreme environment. So, meaning, uh, unlike your normal bacteria, hindi mo sila makikita in your, in the, inside the common household, okay? You will usually find them in constant, very concentrated, very high temperature types of environment. For example, so you have the three types. You have the methanogens, you have the extreme halophiles, you have the extreme thermophiles. Now, let's go to methanogens. Ano ba yung methanogens? Your methanogens class, they are actually, usually, no, they are found inside the gut of the animals. Sa loob ng tiyan ba? Sa intestines ng, ng animals natin? They can also be found in deep layer of marine sediments, sa sand, okay? And then, you can also find them in hydrothermal vents. Now, what are hydrothermal vents? Usually, your hydrothermal vents class, these are fissures no, on, on the sea floor, sa mga pinakamailalim na na parts na, ng ating bodies of water, especially the ocean and the sea. So, uh, your, your hydrothermal vents, coming from its name, hydrothermal, meaning they, these fissures found on the seafloor, they release, okay, or they, they have heated water discharges. Mainit na tubig yung lumalabas sa mga fissure. Okay, and they and you will usually find these types of fissures in areas near volc um, volcanoes or volcanically active places. So if merong uh, vulcan sa area and then may body of water, you will expect na that under the body of water you will find hydrothermal vents. Okay, so ayan. Hydrothermal vents, one example of extreme temperature. Mainit, napaka-init niya. So, dyan nakikita yung mga methanogens natin. Okay? Your methanogens are, these are microorganisms that actually produce methane. So, kaya nga ang name nila is methanogen because they produce methane. So, paano, kailan sila nagpo-produce ng methane? They produce methane as a metabolic byproduct class. Byproduct pa rin siya. So, during their metabolism, they, they produce the methane. Okay? Usually, when there is a lack of oxygen in the environment. And you call this as hypoxic conditions. Sa areas na tinitirahan ng methanogens, they are deprived of adequate oxygen. So, Ayan, they produce methane in hypoxic condition. Hypoxia meaning lack of oxygen. Okay? And how do they how do they how do they do their metabol uh, metabolic process with the use of methanogenesis? So ito yung ginagamit ng methanogens to produce their their nutrients or their source of food, okay? So, during methanogenesis class, the, the microorganism or the methanogens produces your methane as a final step of their anaerobic degradation of carbon. So, hindi na masyado yung importante. Let's go with, okay. Now, usually class, your, bakit ano, bakit dito may sample ako ng ruminants? Okay, what are ruminants? These are usually livestock, um, yung mga cows, kambing, yung mga kumakain ng grass, okay, and seeds or feeds. Ruminants yan sila, why? You call them ruminants because they contain inside their, their gut, okay, they contain the rumen, R-U-M-E-N. Okay, when you say rumen, ito siya yung pinakaunang part ng stomach ng mga ruminants. Okay, so itong rumen, the first part of the stomach, receives food from the 
esophagus. Galing sa esophagus ng isang ruminant, pupunta siya ng rumen. Now, what is found inside the rumen? Your rumen actually contains bacteria that helps digest the food that they ate. Usually, yung mga tanim. Okay? So, may mga bacteria na nakikita sa gut ng inyong or sa rumen ng mga ruminants. When you say ruminants, ito yung mga grazing yung kumakain ng damo. Yan. Okay? So, that you will have a better idea. Now, the bacteria are called methanogens. So, there are methanogens found on the rumen of your ruminants. And they help digest the food that the ruminants eat. In the process, they will produce methane and it will be released on the atmosphere. Okay, so those are methanogens. Now, let's go to extreme halophiles. Your extreme halophiles class, coming from its name, the halophile, it came from the Greek word meaning salt-loving. Okay, salt-loving. You know, I love salt. Your halophiles loves salt. So, meaning, they are microorganisms that are, uh, they thrive in high salt concentration. Gusto nila sa mga environment na mataas ang concentration ng salt. Okay? And then, lastly, you have the extreme thermophiles. These are microorganisms that adapt to uh, temperatures normally found only in hot springs, in hydrothermal vents. So, uh, yung matataas na temperature. Those are extreme thermophiles. Okay, next. So, this is the example of, you, of a ruminant, a cow. Inside the cow, you have the esophagus and then galing sa esophagus pupunta ng rumen. Okay? So, doon, madadigest yung kanyang food and then it will release the uh, methane or CH4. Okay, next. Okay, ito yung example natin ng ano class. Ng, I think sa thermophiles ito or sa halophiles. Okay, so you will see here that it contains uh, sa color niya pa lang, meron na siyang mga microorganisms. Okay, next. You have the eubacteria, the true bacteria. So, they are prokaryotic still, unicellular, and they can also be autotrophic or heterotrophic. They are called true bacteria and they can be found just about everywhere in your, in your, in the surface of your desk, in your, in mismo sa kamay mo. So, merong eubacteria. They can be classified based on their shape, their chemical composition, their motility, and metabolism. Your U bacteria can cause um, animal and plant diseases but can also be beneficial. So, pwedeng harmful ang U bacteria. On the other hand, pwede silang ginagamit for, for ano, no, be, uh, producing products that will benefit the human society. They are all, uh, essential parts of the food and pharmaceutical industry and they can be used to produce or they can also be used to clean up oil spills. Kasi class, meron tayong mga naturally, you call them as naturally occurring hydrocarbon degrading bacteria. Meaning, um, they play an important role in breaking down oil spill. Okay? So, ano yung mga example natin ng mga hydrogen degrading bacteria that you can find no, in the ocean? Number one is your alkanivorax. A-L-C-A-N-I-V-O-R-A-X. Alkanivorax. And number two, you have your marinobacter. M-A-R-I-N-O-B-A-C-T-E-R. So, those are the two types of bacteria that can help uh, clean up oil spill. Okay, next. So, let's go with the three main groups of your bacteria based on the shape. Number one, you have the cocci. Or for singular, you have coccus. So, ang meaning ng cocci in Greek word is berry. Kasi kung tingnan nyo, klase ba? Para silang maliliit na blueberries or kung ano ba ang color nila. Para silang mga berry. Okay, so they look like little berries under the microscope. 
Ang shape nila is spherical and they exist in several different patterns or groupings or arrangements. So, iba-iba, you have different types of cocci based on the arrangement of uh, every single cell. Now, specific groupings of the cells may be a characteristic for the specific genus. So, ginamit nila class yung arrangement, yung iba't ibang klase ng arrangement ng mga cocci in order to classify them into different genus. So, let's see. Okay, the first one uh, is your diplococcus. Ang plural niya is diplococci. Now, it, this is a round bacterium, a coccus that typically occurs in pair. So, dalawang, dalawang cocci na magkadikit. Yan yung diplococcus. So, there are two medically important genera of your diplococcus. Number one, diplococcus itself. And number two, you have the Neisseria. So, ano ba yung diplococcus? Your diplococcus class, these are, ano, no, they are naturally or they are the normal intestinal flora of human beings. So, meaning nakikita sila naturally inside the intestine of humans. And, not just humans but also animals. So, saan sila usually fa nakikita? Inside the gut, the bowel, and it can also be found inside the mouth, sa bunga nga. Now, the second one, you have the, na the Neisseria. Um, your Neisseria usually colonize the mucosal surfaces of many animals, meaning sa, sa ano pa rin? Sa mga intestine, okay? So, among the 11 types of Neisseria or among the 11 species of Neisseria that actually colonize humans, dalawa lang doon ang pathogenic. You have number one, the Neisseria meningitis. Okay, and the second one is the Neisseria gonorrhea. Okay, so I hope you're getting the names. This is just added information class. Okay, so that is the first um, first classification under the cocci. Na the second one is the streptococcus class. Okay, from the Greek word streptos meaning they are easily bent, twisted like a chain or a twisted chain. So, in short, tandaan nyo dito sa streptococcus, parang chain yung formation niya. Chain ng mga cocus. Okay, cocci in chain. So, ang genus niya, streptococcus pa rin. And your streptococcus, these are types of bacteria that usually they cause pharyngitis, whether pneumonia, or they can also infect wounds found on the surface of the skin. Okay, so respiratory system and the skin is affected with your streptococcus. Next. The third one is the Staphylococcus, from the Greek word staphyl, meaning bunch of grapes. So, ang formation ng Staphylococcus para silang kumpul-kumpul na maliliit na grapes, okay? And they do not have a specific number for the cluster. Irregular clusters ito, so pwedeng apat, pwedeng lima, pwedeng anim yung nasa cluster. Okay, there are two types of genera under your staphylococcus number one you have the micrococcus and number two staphylococcus itself what is micrococcus so your micrococcus class um usually you know nakikita uh, the area for your micrococcus where you can find them is usually wide range siya. Um, you can find them throughout the environment pwedeng sa water pwedeng sa dust Okay, and you can also find them on the soil. On the other hand, your staphylococcus. So, your staphylococcus mainly, they cause boils or abscess. Okay, alam niyo yung boils. Pwede ring cellulitis. Now, usually, the, the infections caused by staphylococcus class are not that serious. Hindi naman siya nakakamatay. Pero sometimes, it, your staphylococcus, when being eaten, no, they can cause food poisoning. Okay? So, ito yung mga picture nila. Oh. Okay? This is your uh, staphylococcus. Next, you have the gaphkia or the tetrads. 
So, these are cocci arranged in squares of 4. Apat-apat. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? One example niya is your Micrococcus luteus. When you say Micrococcus luteus, this is actually a, pa um, what they call this, opportunistic pathogen siya class. Okay? It will, it will attack if binigyan mo ng chance or nag-weaken yung iyong immune system. Now, your Micrococcus luteus can cause meningitis or inflammation of your meninges. Your, it can also cause septic arthritis and it can also cause infections or chronic infections in patients that is positive with your human immunodeficiency virus or the virus HIV. Okay, so naaapektuhan niya yung mga taong may HIV. Or, no, no. Because actually, the disease is called AIDS. Okay? Ang, ang sakit is yung AIDS. And then, ang virus that causes the AIDS is the HIV. Okay? When you say HIV, human immunodeficiency virus. And the disease that it will cause is AIDS or Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. Ito yung condition that is produced by your HIV or Human Immunodeficiency Virus. Okay, I hope that is clear. Magkaiba po ang HIV and AIDS. The AIDS is the syndrome and the HIV is the virus causing AIDS. Okay, so next you have the Sarsina or the octads meaning coming from the name octads meaning eight no so parang dinoble mo lang yung tetrads class okay cocci that exist in groups of eight they have a cuboidal um, cell arrangement parang cube okay so you can see here cube siya example natin for this is your sarsina ventriculi no your your sarsina ventricular uh, ventriculi class is found either ano, no, in skin and the large intestine. So, this is the parang iba pang para mak may maran kayong ibang uh, makita na picture. You have the diplococci, you have the staphylococcus, the tetrads, ay, ito ang tetrads, this is the streptococci or the chain, and then you have the sarsina. Okay? Nyan din, oh. So, marami na kayong sample. Okay, next. Okay, excuse me class, I just had a water break. Um, okay, is this recording? Okay, let's continue. The second um, group of bacteria is your bacilli. Okay, the, the shape of your bacilli is like a rod, okay, or cylinder. Kung nakikita nyo dito, pahaba siya, di ba? They are commonly sausage or cigarette shape rods, this one. And they may be short or long, thick or thin, pointed or with blunt ends. Now, they may occur singly or in pairs, like your diplobacilli. Or in chain strepto bacilli. So tandaan, kapag diplo ang nauna, meaning in pair. Kapag ang naunang word is strepto, meaning chain. Okay, so para hindi kayo malito. Now there, there is also a combination of the shape of a cocci and the shape of a basi, bas, I mean the shape of a cocos and the shape of a bacillus. Bacillus siya kapag singular class. So, you call that shape as coco bacilli. Okay, these are uh, bacilli bacteria that nearly looks like a cocci or cocos because they resemble the shape of the cocci. Now, the word coco bacillus reflects an intermediate shape between uh, your cocos, the spherical shape, and the bacillus, the uh, elongated shape. So, Parang ganito rin lang siya, class, pero mas pabilog lang siya ng kaunti, okay? So, imagine the intermediate shape, uh, i-combine mo between your cocos and your bacillus. So, that is the shape. And one example of your coco bacilli is the infamous 
E. coli, okay? Your E. coli that causes the UTI or can cause traveler's diarrhea. So, yan. So, this is your Coco Bacillus. So, diba? Elongated siya but still circle. So, Coco Bacillus. You have your Bacilli. You, ha you have your Diplobacilli, two pair or a pair. You have your Palisades. So, ito hindi nasali, no? And you have your Streptobacilli, chain-like. Okay, the third form is your spiral form or also known as curved rods or spirals. There are three types of your spiral form. Number one, you have the vibrio, a curved or kama-shaped rod. So, parang kama yung shape niya, as you can see here, di ba? Ayan siya. Curved, um, curved shape. And the example for that is your vibrio cholera. Or Vibrio cholerae. Now, your Vibrio cholera class, they are usually found in brackish water or in salt water. Okay? Usually sa ocean and seas. And, um, saan sila usually nakikita? They actually attach themselves doon sa shells ng mga crabs, shrimps, and other shellfish. Bakit? Anong habol nila doon sa shells ng mga crabs and shrimps? Yung chitin or c h i t i n okay chitin containing kasi yung mga shells yun yung kinakain nila sa sa i mean sa shells ng mga shellfish natin okay the chitin or chitin kung anong gusto niyo di ba so vibrio cholera yan siya next you have this spirilla the actual spirals like uh Actual spirals like corkscrew and the cell bodies are relatively rigid and have a rigid cell wall. So, ito siya class, corkscrew siya, pero matigas yung shape na ganito. The spirilla is rigid because it contains a rigid cell wall. On the other hand, you also have your spirochetae, okay? So, or spirochetes if... Uh, ano yung gusto mong pronunciation niya? Spirochete or spirochete. Now, they are also spiral. Pero ang pinagkaiba ng nilang dalawa, your spirochetes are actually capable of flexing because or twisting movements because they have a flexible cell wall. Okay? So, you differentiate. Usually, class, mas, ano, no, mas curly yung spirochete or spirochete compared to your spirilla. One example of your spirochete is the uh, treponema pallidum. Your treponem, uh, treponema pallidum causes the STD or sexually transmitted disease called syphilis. Okay, so another, ito yung sa course pack ninyo. Now, some bacteria may lose their characteristic shape because... Adverse growth conditions prevent the production of normal cell walls. So, kapag hindi maganda yung condition ng environment class, naapektuhan yung cell wall na bacteria. So, it will not have the normal shapes, okay, of bacteria. And they will have a, what they call this, wall deficient, ang tawag sa kanila, wall deficient bacteria called L-forms. Now, your L-forms can also be called as L-phase bacteria, P-H-A-S, no? E, L-phase bacteria, or you can also call them as CWD, or cell wall deficient bacteria. Now, in L-forms, uh, these are strains of your bacteria that lacks cell wall, and they have two types. Meron kang dalawang types ng L-forms. Number one is the unstable L-form. Number two, stable L-form. So, unahin natin yung unstable L-form. Ano ba yung unstable L-forms? From the word unstable, meaning these are bacteria that are capable of reverting to its original morphology. So, kapag unstable L-form class, may pag-asa pa siya na bumalik sa dati niyang shape. 
yung bacteria na yan, okay? On the other hand, kapag yung bacteria is stable L4, it is unable to revert back to its original uh, morphology. Hindi na siya makakabalik sa original shape niya. Okay? So, that is stable L forms. Okay, so some will, ayan no, some of the bacteria or some of the L forms will revert to their original shape when placed in favorable uh, growth conditions. Kapag maganda yung environment, but others will not. Okay, next. So another group, may isa pang group that um, the, also the, uh, they do not contain the cell wall. Okay. Okay, another group of very small bacteria that character, uh, characteristically produces little or no cell wall is your genus Mycoplasma. Okay, they are they appear in various pleomorphic shapes. Okay, yung shape ng Mycoplasma is pleomorphic. When you say pleomorphic. Uh, you can assume or you can assume that they take several shapes or forms. May iba-iba silang uh, shapes and forms. Okay, kapag pleomorphic. Now, um, what is the... Okay, may added information pa pala ako. Your, your mycoplasma class, they are parasitic types of bacteria. Okay, they can be parasites. And they are naturally resistant to antibiotics that target the cell wall synthesis. So, di ba, yung mga antibiotics natin, meron tayong mga antibiotics that only targets the, the production of the cell wall of bacteria. Bakit? So, kasi di ba, the cell wall is the protection of your bacteria. And <clears throat> one way to kill your bacteria is to stop them from forming the cell wall para wala na silang protection now itong mga micro, uh, mycoplasma they do, they they already do not contain cell wall kaya kahit na you will take the medicine or the antibiotics hindi na sila affected why kasi dati pa wala na silang cell wall okay now what's the difference between your your L form and mycoplasma um, first, eh, sige, take up muna natin yung kanilang related uh, properties. Number one, they, they have no rigid cell shape. Malalambot sila. Both your L form and mycoplasma are softly shaped. No? They, rep they also reproduce slowly. Mahina yung reproduction. And they are relatively fragile or fragile very susceptible to changes in osmotic pressure. Bakit sila susceptible sa osmotic pressure? Because yun nga, wala silang cell wall. And remember, the cell wall is the one that controls the exit and entrance of water, di ba? Once, uh, one function of your cell wall is to control the, and sometimes prevent, the entrance of H2O, okay, coming from the environment, in sa uh, papasok ng uh, bacteria. So, kapag nag-change, there's a change in the osmotic pressure, uh, mahirap maka-adapt yung L forms and mycoplasma. Kasi nga, wala silang cell wall as a protection. So, they're very uh, sensitive to, to osmotic pressure change. Now, let's take the difference between your L forms and mycoplasma. The main difference between your L form and mycoplasma class is uh, doon sa kanilang ano no, ability to revert back to the original shape. Your L form, some of the L form can revert back and change back to their uh, right uh, shape when the conditions or the right conditions are met. So, pwede pa silang babalik sa original shape. On the other hand, your mycoplasma is, ano na, ganun na talaga yung characteristic niya. Okay? The mycoplasma, the characteristic of your mycoplasma stays the same and maintain the no cell wall condition. So, they will not revert to a normal shape of a bacteria. Ganun na talaga sila, okay? So, that's the difference between 
that too. Okay, so you have here another um, another table containing the different bacteria, samples of bacteria, and the disease that they uh, that they produce and their type. Meaning, ano ba yung spore forming ba siya? Ano yung shape niya? Cocci ba? Cocoid? Or rod shape? Like the bacillus? So, it this depends, okay? So, you will also need to familiarize this. So, ito yung mahirap na part dito sa uh, chapter 3 natin. Marami kayong in-memorize na mga types ng microorganisms or names, scientific names of microorganisms and the diseases. So, this will also be included in your next quiz. So, on the left side, uh, you will have the name of the bacteria. For example, number one, Bacillus anthracis. Ano yung pinoproduce niya na disease? It causes anthrax. Ano yung type ng uh, Bacillus anthracis? Spore forming rod. Okay. And in the gram stain, positive siya. The, your, your Bacillus anthracis is a positive or gram positive bacteria. Yeah. Okay, naalala nyo pa yung gram positive and gram negative. So, nakalagay dito, some of your bacteria, may nakalagay na classification niya if either gram positive ba siya or gram negative. Okay, so, nakalagay ba dito positive, gram positive, or negative, gram variable? Ah, okay. So, meaning class, yung mga bacteria dito na walang positive or negative, meaning yan, pwede siyang positive, pwede rin siyang negative. Okay? Sa gram stain. So, if positive ang nakalagay, gram positive bacteria lang talaga siya. If negative, gram negative bacteria lang talaga siya. Pero kapag walang nakalagay, meaning either of the two. Okay? So, I hope you familiarize this. Uh, gayahin nyo itong technique namin noon. Oh. Um, ang ginawa namin dati is, we use um, only capital letters for memorization. Okay? But, I ayan. So, I hope you will read this and familiarize. Kasi, kapag hindi nyo ito yung memorize, pagdating ng exam or quizzes, matatagalan kayo kasi hanapin nyo pa isa-isa dito sa copy ninyo dyan sa course pack kung saan yung tinutukoy ko na sakit, di ba? So, it takes time. So, in order to answer your exam as fast as possible, lalong-lalo na sa midterm class, uh, mahaba na yung exam ninyo kasi dapat 100 items na, na siya, I think. So, you will need to familiarize. Para kapag nakita mo, alam mo na agad, or at least alam mo, siya, alam mo saan mo hahanapin, hindi ka na matagalan. Okay? At hindi ka magkakaroon ng minus points. Okay? Now, this is the second table. I think this is not, ano na, hindi uh, naman siya masyadong kailangan. You just read this one. But, as you can see nga, wala siyang notes. <laughs> so, this one is, Napakarami na kasi. So, I'm just telling you the, the important no, ones or yung mga important table. Usually, yung may mga kuris-kuris. Yung mga malinis. Okay? So, hindi na masyado yan. Uh, please also read the further reading. Maybe kukuha ko ng quiz dito. If klaro siya sa inyo, you read your course pack. If hindi, ito mas, I think, Mababasa nyo naman itong nilagay ko dito na picture. So, that's for the end of the chapter 3. Again, thank you for watching. I hope that you're taking down notes. Um, we will have our quiz on this. So, please memorize the, the tables and also um, take note of the additional information I, I am giving you. Okay, so thank you and... This is the end of chapter 3. Um, I will see you again next video for the chapter 4. And that's all. Bye class!